Um, up next is um, more of a conversation. So um, what I'm going to do right now um, is introduce um, our next speaker, but I'm going to have a conversation and a chat um, with her. Our next guest uh, tells us that even in her name, in Kosa, uh, means visionary. So this is Boniswa Peziza's uh, raison d'etre. Uh, she says, is serving, giving brand social currency, building cultures, um, and she's a mother, a coach, a spiritual warrior, I love that, business leader, communication and transformation activist, and the former CEO of Network BBDO. She's the past chair of ACA um, and the Leary's Board, the current Leary's Board Hall of Fame um, inductee, and she serves on various NGO boards, and is also a management uh, and executive coach for the new uh, venture, which is called a Bon Vision. So, Boniswa, um, I'm going to just share um, some slides that we had chatted about uh, before uh, and then getting into our conversation. So, just let me get to this. Um, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, let me just get this up and running properly. Okay. There we go. All right, Boniswa, how are you doing? Good morning, I'm very, very well. I'm very excited, especially coming after Andrea and Luzugo. I mean, these presentations or these conversations are not coordinated, but the thread is the same. Great. So I'm gonna dive right into it because um, I know that you wanna share about five different topics or points. So I'm going to go into the first one, having come through from Luzuko's uh, presentation and just kind of chatting about Africa and Gen Z. What are your thoughts about Gen Z and, like you said, the agents of the change agents for the future? What do you mean by that? They, they are, I think, you know, you asked the question right at the beginning, Dion, about um, the word of the year. I think the one word that we also left out was frontliners. And, and I think as leaders and organizations, we forget one, so if you've got the front liners, who are your second liners? And for me, this generation are second liners. They bring fresh thinking, they look at things differently. And so it is becoming critical that this cohort is not just seen or heard, they should be part of decision-making. So if you've got a risk management team or strategy team, or even a scenario planning, you couldn't, you, you cannot do justice to the sustainability of the organization if you don't include the, the, this cohort in that panel and in that thinking, because what they bring in is fresh. Um, you, you know, we know we've got the big three mega trends that are driving the world, environmental issues, social justice, as well as the issues around tech and AI. However, what we have here, we have a cohort that's born with technology. They understand technology and they understand the good side and the bad side of technology. Um, there was a book that was written about two years ago that says without their permission, and this generation understands that, to say technology should be used without permission and they know how to do that. So as, as leaders, we can't just think we are building organizations that are going to take us into the future without bringing this cohort into the room and include them in everything that we are doing. And they are a generation of inclusion. Um, if one thing they stand for is social justice, inclusion, as well as, hey, make sure you, you, you leave this home, which is this earth, our home, better, rather than messing it up as we are doing. I completely agree with you. And I always you know, say to people, um, especially big corporates, you know, that, uh, you know, you've got somebody, um, you know, no disrespect to a, a baby boomer or a Gen Xer that, that uh, is tech proficient, but, um, you know, if you're doing a digital or social media strategy, should you not get a, a digital native um, in to advise you about the best ways of doing it, because they know that environment so much more. And I also sort of encourage, you know, people to say, uh, you know, in, in organizations, do you have a speak up culture? Because I think a lot of times, young voices, um, you know, are, are just kind of shut down and, you know, you don't know the business and, and, and we don't know that, but they do know uh, a new world order and, and you know, how to, to, to go through that. So I think we yeah. tend to forget 
that we run a business for a customer or for a consumer at the end of the day. So that's why we need to bring them in. They are our consumers. They are the consumers of the future. Great. So on to the next uh, topic that you wanted to chat about. And I think that leads very nicely in from, you know, so, so what sort of brands and, and, and leadership are doing. Um, and uh, you wanted to chat about, um, yeah, uh, conscious leadership or... Uh, I think the, the concept of conscious leadership has been coming on for a while and we're seeing it now, it's becoming, COVID has made it more forceful and it's imperative that leaders cannot just sit at home and assume that they can, I'm compelled to work from my couch at home, which was never reserved for the business. And therefore leadership's gotta be conscious and be leadership of empathy, leadership of love is what this time requires and I think as we move forward because the, the the challenges of COVID could have been the challenges of climate or anything else and therefore leadership's got to be empathetic they've got to be pre when I say presence I mean really be with your people lead with intuition um, and be connected to your tribes and your teams you may not belong to the tribe because they're all 20 something but be connected to them and understand what they're about because when we do we actually get more and better out of our people right now organizational psyche is really really frail given the challenges of COVID, and therefore as organizations what are we doing to rebuild that to reconnect with our people and ensure that their wellness is taken care of. And it's a critical thing for this time. So mindfulness in organization is, is a key prerequisite from a leadership point of view. Yeah, I you know, absolutely agree. You, you know, just in the, the presentation that I gave to start off with, you know, I mentioned saying, mm -hmm. you know, we've got to kind of uh, really have this uh, conversation about stakeholder capitalism versus shareholder primacy and and you know this is really what it is and i think everybody can agree that 2020 um you know there's zero basing at work every all of your assumptions all of your your plans and strategies just were wiped away and because empathy was such a big um need and topic you know i think that's your your consciousness and leadership is is, is yeah is, is spot on i think people have very, or I think businesses have very different priorities that they thought they had in 2019 in 2021. It's a very different landscape and I'm sure you agree with me in that. And we, we need to take it forward as we move forward because these unprecedented times, as I mentioned earlier, are gonna come in fr from the side, from the blind side. We, we, we don't know where it's gonna come from. So if, it's a, if this was a climatic challenge of all times for humanity, for the world at large, how would we deal with it? And part of our planning is thinking about those and really being conscious about our tribes. How are they coping? And therefore, how will they cope when that hits us? Because yeah. that will affect our businesses and entities that we run. Well, that really brings us on to social justice. And just what you were saying, I, I just saw, you know, a protest outside a bank. It was also about climate change. But the, the poster was great because I said, if climate was a bank, you would have saved it long ago. And, and that's kind of what yes. Yes. So social justice, yes. And Gen Z, I mean, I, I call them social justice warriors. The, the social justice barometer is so high. So what are your thoughts on this? The, 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 the issue with social justice is also as, as the challenges of the world economy deepen, we beginning to push responsibility to the general public at large. And therefore, in so doing, we need to be far more democratic in the way we think and bring them in. So civic society has got to be part of my stakeholdership. Um, you know, we've got to lead beyond our authority. My authority is not just my little company. It's everything around me that surrounds me. And therefore, bring in all those stakeholders and really listen to all the voices that are in because that's what social justice is. If we're gonna palm off responsibility and accountability to society, then let's work with it and ensure that they are part of decision-making or we take cognizance of their voices and the noises that they make. Yeah, you know, I think there's a, a brilliant uh, model that uh, Bronwyn does speak about um, you know, in Japan, where um, your, your citizens are actually like a board of directors for the government and they, they make sure that you, you know, you, you um, um, deliver your mandate. Um, Absolutely. So, so yeah. our ecosystems have to work with them. 
Okay. In, in every um, your your next slide is really interesting. So you know the the changing face of leadership. So 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 what what is like the one hundred and one the most important thing that needs to change in need? I mean we've talked about you know stakeholder capitalism rather shareholder primacy. So what what do leaders need to do from your side? I, th I think you know we we we, we are competitiveness in the way we run our businesses has actually confused us a bit because in all of that we now need and COVID has brought this to the forefront where I need to lead my organization at the same time I need to ensure that my suppliers and my stakeholders are well their well-being is critical therefore leadership has to be now leadership of oneness and leadership of inclusion whereby in my strategic planning in my risk management in my scenario planning i have to ensure that my suppliers or my stakeholders are well and i actually ensure that i fuel their business because if i don't my business won't thrive my business won't survive therefore thrivers in the economy and the period that we're going in have to be collaborators. Without collaboration, you cannot thrive. And, and, and the thriving is you, you've got to collaborate with your teams, your staff, your customers, your supply and everyone. So you no longer run your organization in a narrow way. You've got to have a broad perspective. And, and therefore inclusion is critical in every sense of the word. And I've been reading a lot uh, just to, to take that inclusion idea a little bit further. You know, a lot of people are saying, you know, pre-COVID, because uh, it's just been so devastating for so many uh, families, is, you know, you, you need to also change the relationship between uh, yourself as the employer and the employees. You don't look at that employee just as that, that individual person or that number, but what are the familial situations that that person has and what is the community that they live in? It's just a much broader way of, of as you say, inclusion. Absolutely, because I didn't invite you. I mean, I love you as my boss, Dion. You, we work very, very well. But I never wanted you to come onto my red couch at home. And, and the spirit has forced you to come to my red couch. And therefore, I need you to be empathetic. I need you to include me in your thinking. When, when we do scenario planning, when we plan for the next strategy, plan with my red couch in mind and the technical challenges I will be facing. So again, the issue of the office, are we really ever gonna to want to go back to the office? And if we go back to the office, what does that look like? From a leadership point of view, from, from a culture building point of view, those are the things we need to wrestle with. Yeah, I think one of the biggest challenges is, is you know, how do we, we break that, that, that nine to five mentality and, and as I said in the, my introduction, the fact that we've separated work from place of work um, just changes everything. Um, your final point was about uh, disruptive agility. So that's a nice little uh, contradiction in terms. So what, what do you mean about that? Well, you see, marathons have changed in nature. And, and, and I think that the presence of COVID in our lives has changed that a lot. Marathons have become sprints because we have to change the way we work we have to change the way we think in every sense of the word. And, and therefore, our, our knowledge and the skill base, it, this takes me back to the incorporation of the Gen Zs. Because they don't have the baggage that we as current leaders and, and states, statesmen have, they ask interesting questions and questions that really make us to think differently. So for me to be truly, truly agile, a, a, agile and be ready for any disruption, the management board has got to change. The, the face of that board has got to be different so that you can be agile to deal with everything that you are challenged with. So, and again, I go back to the front liners and the, and, and, and the second liners. What does that look like and what does that bring? Because when you begin to bring um, true, true, when you embrace diversity in its true its nature, you are going to have different ideas that are going to propel you forward. But if you want sameness and the same voices that have taught you to do the same thing, well, you might as well be insane um, and, and be sent to the asylum. And, and so for me is the boundaries have blurred, therefore let's open them wide in order for us to be agile and, and really embrace change and have a clear distinction um, about who can truly, truly bring change and, and help us slow down to speed up. 
And for most organizations, it is about slowing down for a second, take that deep breath and really look around at what we have and how we've, um, our boards are constituted and, and begin to re review because once you bring in different voices, you bring in different mindsets, you can really speed up and really your, your marathon does become a sprint, but it's a sprint you can really enjoy. Because if yeah. you're trained as a marathon runner, you are not trained as a sprint runner. Therefore, you need sprinters into the room. Absolutely. And I also think uh, um, whenever I'm faced with executives, I also say to them, uh, you know, you need to also, and I think uh, this, this period, which uh, this, this great staggering, I call it, is the perfect time to not only work um, um, in your business, but on your business. And I think all the rules have changed and we need to, to do that. Um, thanks, Bonisa. Uh, please stay on this. Um, I've just seen one question that I'd love to pose to you. Um, and it's an interesting one. This is from uh, Mignon. Uh, Fenta, um, how do you keep the balance between respect and familiarity? Because that's an interesting one, because like you said, you know, you've, you've come into people's homes with, uh, uh, you know, with remote uh, working, there's a lot more empathy that's required, um, you know, not only from co-workers, but from leadership. So the balance between involved in your employees' lives and being part of their tribe, but still keeping professionalism and a level of authority. An interesting question. So what do you say about that? So... It, it, uh, for me, I go back to, to, to love because when you, when you do something with love, you're going to be authentic. Therefore, you're not going to try and be familiar with me about my red couch and make a joke about it because you don't know the situation around that. And, and therefore, authenticity and realness is what's going to make the relationship stronger and deeper. This period actually is about deepening our relationship, but it also is about deepening our respect for one another. So respect is gonna be one of the critical values for every leader, for any leader at all times. And, and so again, without their permission, that's where you need their permission in, in order to really to move forward and, and engage with them and bring the troops with you. Because when you don't respect, when you're too familiar, you, you actually end up in a wrong borderline. And therefore inclusion, inclusion is about respect. Inclusion is about really being empathetic. It's also using your intuition. I spoke about leadership beyond authority because your leadership has not gone into my home and you're dealing with my dog that's barking during a Zoom call. And there's very little I can do about the barking dog. So be respectful for that moment and no jokes about my barking dogs next time we meet. <laughs> Great, um, Bonisa, thank you so much uh, to, for that. Um, I'm going to say thank you and goodbye uh, because uh, I think we're running out of time and we need to uh, go for a, a break and actually a lunch break. Um